All right, guys, what's up? Um, yeah, I got my glasses out today. Anyway, continue with box three, and this is basically a company that came out after Jim about after Jim Shooter had Valiant sold out from under him. Uh, the way I found out about this is I back in '93 or something like that. I needed some money, so I ended up selling a '90-issue run of X-Men got some money for it and the guy also gave me trade so you know I had a little bit of money thrown around and I bought this this is Warriors of Plasma alright now Marvel retaliated against this company I guess because of the bulk of what was going on a little defiant Genesis some kind of comic fest uh, limited edition issue and the only thing I've ran across this before and the only thing different is this little banner so they came, anyway, Marvel came out with a character named Plasma or something, and they sued Defiant Comics, number four. And they won the court, they won, uh, Defiant Comics won it in court, but it made them spend all their reserves and they had to shut down. So after a little bit over a year putting out comics, building up to a great big huge crossover, that is War Dancer, he'll pop up they ended up closing shop so I think I'm maybe four books or so away from owning everything they published and I think it's just kind of cool to own a whole company now warriors of plasm from what I can tell they're in another dimension and everything is alive all right that is glitter from dark uh, dominion which will pop up here in a minute and basically you could tell that valiant and the new universe were blueprints for this New Universe led to Valiant, Valiant led to Defiant, and they were knocking it out here. Everybody that, there's Schism, right there, as you can see, I'm sure you can read, and that was going to be their big crossover. Uh, it was not It was a formula that looked like Jim Shooter was using one all the way back to Secret Wars with the crossover of all the heroes. Uh, this is a Christmas special done by Dave Cocker. Anyway, Plasm, in that dimension, everything is alive. The clothes... Uh, everybody is recycled, everything is recycled, the clothes are alive, the sports they have are, it, it predates Quinnich uh, from Harry Potter, uh, it's called Splatterball, even the little balls and everything that they tried to kill uh, was recycled. So they had a whole complete view of death and everything in war, it was to feed the plasma. Now, I think this should be one of the top 100 comic stories of all time, Charlemagne. This is number one of this, of course. Um, and basically, in the 70s, this kid's brother is supposedly dead in Vietnam, and this is about how a little kid stows away on a ship and hitchhikes and everything and goes to Vietnam and spends years there trying to find his brother. It's just an amazing thing. Of course, he ends up tied into like a comic book. And what's cool is that this is War Dancer, who ends up getting his own book, and it turns out these two guys are supposed to be big time enemies. You just didn't know where it was going. Uh, number three, uh, number five, here's number four, they're out of order, great stuff, here's War Dancer, Al Weiss did, uh, Alan Weiss did the art for you 70s guys, if you remember him, he's really got his own style and really good, War Dancer, it's him fighting Charles Monet, and they're still fighting, and they're still fighting, oh that's the same issue, yeah, great stuff. And basically the War Dancer, his arrival is supposed to be leading up to Schism, is what they're doing in the Prophecy. Dark Domain, the Dark Dominion, uh, they pulled in Steve Englehart to do some of this stuff. Basically he's in our world, and he can see these little, when he goes into like a quantum field, is what he calls it, he can see little demons who are, who, uh, are on our shoulders, who are pretty much, they're, what make, they're, they're what's making us have addictions and being depressed and uh, some are big Dark Dominion 3 some are little some are scared of him he meets Gilgamesh who lives there there's people other people there Let's see in the quantum field he can see what this what's tormenting this little girl and it's a big one okay number six get a close up of that him fighting it's like a giant uh, 
the good guys were, were a bunch of kids who ended up getting powers. And what was cool about this book is Defiant Comics ran a contest in real life for a bunch of kids. And if they won the contest, they became the heroes. Their faces, that is actually them. So these kids get to run around and say they're in a comic book. And they call themselves the good guys. And of course, those kids are the bad guys, I'm sure. Really good book number four. Number five. And of course, this, you know, in the real world also. Number seven. I think we'll get through these pretty quick. There's Charles Monet. Number eight. And then they brought in Chris Claremont. And he brings out characters from Warriors of Plasm. Prudence there was locked up in Plasm. And it was really wild seeing her because she'd been locked up for so long. She had the fingernails that were like five feet long, curled up, hair all the way down there. They only put out two issues of that. Chris Claremont wrote them. Of course, he would write, you know, a strong woman. Dogs of War. When the Earthlings who were trapped in the Plasm world came back, they had powers. And this is about two of them. really underrated series. Read a lot like a Valley comic, but of course Jim Shooter is writing it. Okay. And that's where it ended, starting with Schism. And I looked up uh, finding these. I found this one. What they did is as an incentive, you know, it was the 90s, so everybody had a gimmick. What you have here is Warriors of Plasma. And this is actually the zero issue that was a series of trading cards that you had to put together and I tell you what this was a lot of work and I found a wax box set at a flea market and I found this I mean I may even put four bucks into it maybe and I tell you what the work what you have to do to get these in there in the correct order just really the sun's coming out in winter even okay I don't think it's really worth it. And there's Splatterball. This was an incentive issue that came with this. And it's the sport of Splatterball and, and you know, kind of like football where you try to kill the ball. And that's a whole comic in there. And of course we had some, another rare little card. Everybody's into trading cards. So I found that one and that was a lot of work which I just don't think really paid off. It was cool to have. But I found this one, I have no idea. I don't know if it's a flea market. I'm imagining it was a flea market maybe, and I looked up because somebody had already gone through the work of putting it all together. And Steve Ditko did the artwork for you Steve Ditko nuts. You know, nice little story there. Find out that he's a writer writing about the Dark Dominion, trying to warn people, and his publishers drops him or is about to drop him. And, my God, I apologize for the sun coming out. You know, homeless people can see the demons and stuff. Turns out they're not, you know, a little moral story there. Uh, oh, plenty of time. And, of course, looks like I'm going to have this one in two parts. We have, everybody can groan at the same time. We have the new universe books. And I'll tell you what, DP7, Mark Greenwald, enjoyed it. I'm going to still read this. DP7 was recorded in Urban Legend, the project that got Jim Shooter booted because it was such a failure. But it was the real world by Marvel. Everybody was just so happy they could jump into a new universe here from the beginning since, you know, if you weren't born in the 60s. And uh, each issue took place in one time, one month elapsed between each issue. DP7, Mark Grunewald, you know, did a really good job at, you know, this thing was sinking fast. Um, I had probably every issue from the first uh, year little annual there the witness and then they went uh, tried to revamp it and you can see the new style new cover uh, that Spitfire she had her own book which was canceled uh, they also had Kickers Incorporated which was canceled going into the second year I had all those and Merck was canceled Merck was by Peter David it was like a real-life mercenary but I don't know why I'm talking about books I don't have anymore and I was lucky to unload those this is a uh, night mask Archie Goodwin Psy Force, Archie Goodwin, Mark Pixar, really good stuff. Going on and on. Somebody was coming to the door, I thought. I enjoyed these. Kind of remind me of the Forever People, if you guys remember that, because they all got together and make a, a 
kind of like uh, they'd all get together and do something and make this big warhawk who was their mentor in this shelter. And of course, you know, Race Against Time, they revamped it. Jessup's was also by Archie Goodwin, and you know, I kind of dug this book, but it was he brought in, you know, fantasy elements, maybe sci-fi elements. They were from, he was from another dimension, a cop from another dimension, had his shield, and then the other hand shot a laser, which was his sword. Uh, and this was more of a, a comic book, supposed to be in the real world, and I noticed a huge difference there from the other books. Probably why I enjoyed it. Um, as they went on, Peter David came on the book and made it to where it was all a dream. A uh, paranormal, which is what they call people with powers, since they couldn't say mutants, had actually had this guy uh, in like a dream state for a long time. It was all a dream. And he has to wake up in the real world. Justice also had the mullet. Yeah. And a book I, I liked. Um, Star Brand. Let me move this around. There we go. It's the annual. There's the first issue. John Romita Jr., Jim Shooter. He gets the Star Brand. It's got, uh, this thing was so powerful, it got dragged into the regular Marvel Universe. This is a brand or a tattoo, however you want to call it, that gets passed from somebody and they have a lot of powers. Now, what's amazing is they said that uh, you have infinite power, basically. And basically what they were saying is that even after you pass the star brand on, which is supposed to be a curse also, you kept 10% of the power. Well, 10% of infinity is still infinity. And, uh, yeah, that's the alien that gave it to him. You know, it had a lot of shades of Green Lantern, a little bit to me, and then you find out that's not really what happened. Another issue. Uh, fights terrorism. And here's the great Keith Giffen issue where Night Mask from this, you know, makes a little cameo and they go into Ken O'Connell's dreams there and he ends up in a Kirby Marvel Universe where he's a superhero, Kirby style. And Kirby noticed that there. Yeah. John Byrne came on. He was working on Superman books. Second year they went into a bi monthly state and he just took off with this. This is really good. He went public as a hero and, um, there is at a comic book convention. You know, it looks like the X Men were in there, but it's a comic book convention. And he talks to Mark Greenwald and John Byrne, and all these people are telling him you're an idiot for trying to be a hero. You know, they go into it, and the place ends up getting blown up, and everybody dies. A little Star Brand baby. Yeah, he just took off, man. It's turned into like a big time sci fi story. Um, I think John Byrne hung out with Larry Niven, so that's probably what fueled the fire there great issue. Star Brand starts getting passed around. Right in the pit. They blew up Pittsburgh. Last issue. Say the last issue. Turns out our president was a paranormal. Which led to the war coming out. I'm sure I have an issue somewhere if I didn't get rid of it. There you go. That is box three. Little personal favorites there. Um, and you hope you enjoyed it.